Okay. So hello and welcome to MedExam Expert. I'm Dr. Huda Naim and um, welcome to the OET um, webinar. Today we will be discussing some important tips and tricks on how you can improve your OET grades. So uh, the first and foremost is that on the OET exam, you will be expected to uh, perform your role as a physician, as a doctor or as a medical professional, whomever you might be. So you might you are expected to perform a real role as a professional, as a thorough professional. So you would be expected to read, speak, write and listen in the way a doctor or a medical professional should. So um, let's just go through a little bit of details about the exam. So basically the occupational English test or the OET exam is the evidence of language proficiency, which is accepted by the General Medical Council, GMC, the Education Commission for Foreign Medical Graduates, the ECFMG, which is for the US MLE or what, uh, the UK, US, USA boards that uh, people give the exams for, the Irish Medical Council and a lot of other councils that accept OET as the English language proficiency exam. And uh, if or any candidate, any doctor or any medical professional is trying to enter into the global market, so they might they will be expected to give an English language exam uh, if they are non-native speaker or even if they are a native speaker, they will be expected to give an English language exam. So uh, like I told you, the OAT exam is basically designed to assess your linguistic ability as a medical professional that you're able to communicate effectively and accurately. So uh, you have to, uh, all the performance that you have to show on the exam will be related to the medical curriculum, the medical profession, and not if any other domain. Like for example, in the IELTS, you were expected to uh, write about different topics regarding business or weather or any other topic. Uh, but here in the OAT exam, you will be specifically asked to write or speak about your own uh, field of profession, which you will be selecting beforehand. So uh, basically the OAT exam consists of four components. The first is reading, listening, speaking, and writing. So uh, the reading, listening, and writing will be done in, on the same day in a consequent manner. There will no, be no breaks in between each of the uh, exam, but on the, the speaking might be on the same day, or for some candidates, it might be a few hours later, or some might have it on the next day. So that will depend on from candidate to candidate, but the other three are done on the same day in one go. For medical professionals to qualify for the OET exam, you need to score a 350 or more in each of the component. In case a candidate is not able to score 350, then they have to give the entire exam all over again. So it's an exam where you would not like to take risk and you would like to be very well prepared so that you can clear the exam in one go. So the first subtest of the OAT exam is the reading subtest. So basically it is of 442 marks and it is um, it lasts for one hour. So you have 60 minutes and you have three parts of that exam. The first part or the part A is for 15 minutes and where you will be expected to do a fast, quick reading, uh, an expeditious reading scenario. I will be showing you how it looks like, what it looks like and what will are you expected to do on that exam. And then uh, the next 45 minutes are for careful thorough reading where you have to read passages or you have to read uh, basically in part B, you have to read small passages. And in part C, you have a long uh, 200 or 250 page passage where you have to read it and then you have to answer the questions accordingly. So the reading test subtest part A in which you have to do a fast, uh, it's basically like a scanning of a reading. So what you ha have to do is that you have four subtests, you have four texts, and you have to just quickly skim through those. And you just have to see what are the basic concepts that are being discussed in each of those passages. And at the end of it, you have questions like these, where you will be asked about uh, you will be given a question and you are expected to know that this context was mentioned in which paragraph. For example, if the first uh, question is asking you about procedures for del delivering pain relief, in which passage that was shown to you, uh, was it present? Was it in passage A, passage B, passage C or passage D? No 
particular details, but just a quick a quick uh, skim through of what is present in each passage. So this is your um, the reading subtest part A. The first seven questions are like that. And in the next seven questions from question number eight to question number 14, you have to answer in one word or in short phrases. So you just have to go through the passage in a very quick manner and you just have to uh, write one or few words in each of those questions. So this will be all about your reading subtest A and you have to give your paper back in after those 15 minutes, you will not be getting any extra time after that to recheck or rewrite or even write the answers. So my tip to all of you would be in reading section A, always whenever you're practicing, always try to practice it in a timed mode. And along with that, uh, try to write your answers at the same time. Do not think the answers and then try to leave the uh, and leaving the answers to the last moment. You're not supposed to do that. Just solve the questions and write the answers there and then. Because you will not be getting any extra time to write those answers. Then in the reading subtest part B, you will be given small passages and then you have questions regarding those passage. Each passage will have one question and you have to read that passage and then you have to answer that question. Fairly straightforward, not really, um, not very difficult to do, but it requires a lot of practice so that you can read the passage very fast. And then the third part, part C of the reading subtest, the trickiest part is where you have a passage and then you have to answer questions from that passage. So then you have questions. So what you really need to know in this kind of, uh, in reading subtest part three, you do not have to mark the literal meaning of words. Like they might be telling you, um, they might be asking you in th that a particular word, what does this particular word mean in this passage? So you do not have to write the accurate word, the accurate meaning. You have to write the meaning. You have to take the option which has the meaning in context of this passage. So that is a mistake a lot of candidates do that they try to um, mark the option having the definition of that particular word that is not the correct option you have to ma mark the option which is in context of that particular word the word is used in context of that paragraph so how you can improve your grades on reading first thing would be to practice practice as much as you can read all about medical literature any medical literature that you come across uh, it could be research papers it could be medical blogs it could be um, any of your medical text then um, after that you can improve your OAT reading score by improving your vocabulary backhand beforehand before you start booking the exam whenever you're planning that you might give the OAT exam in the future start practicing it there and then so you can any new word you come across try to write it down look at them look up at the meaning of that particular word and look up the pronunciation of that particular word on Google and that will really help you a lot. So since you're a medical professional, uh, the, your background knowledge of medical terminologies will be very, very helpful and very beneficial for you in improving your OAT score because you exactly know what that particular word means. So you can read medical articles, medical books, any other sources of information that you can come across and any medical concept or terminology that you come across, try to learn and familiarize yourself uh, from with those medical terms and expressions. And that will really help you to score well. So scoring on part subtest A and B is fairly easier than subtest C. Subtest C requires a lot of practice in reading those long passages and trying to answer them accordingly. So are there any questions on the reading subtest, anything that you did not understand or you want me to repeat it so I can repeat it before we move on to the speaking subtest? So are there any questions from the reading subtest? How to improve your score in the reading part C? See, uh, anything that you can do in for the OAT exam is to practice. The more you practice, the more you will be able to uh, improve your score. So there's no other solution than to practice. Okay. Okay. The art of skimming, exactly. You need the more you practice, the more you will be able to understand that how much in how much detail do you need to read the text and how much can you skim through it. So that will all come with practice. Okay. 
Okay. Now we come on to the next subtest, which is the listening subtest. This is something a lot of candidates find difficult because there will be no repetition of those uh, of the speech, and you just have to hear it one time, and then you just have to mark the answer, and you will not be given any extra time at the end to mark your answers. So as soon as you're listening to the audio, you have to write your answer there and then. So there are three subtests again for the listening part. So the total marks are 42 and you have 45 minutes in total. So the first, the part A is for 24 marks and that are the consultation extracts. So you will be hearing an audio where you will have a doctor and a patient and they're having a, a conversation about any consultation and there will be fill in the blank kind of questions which you have to fill in as you hear the audio. Then part B will have six uh, is for six marks and they are short workplace extracts where you will hear a conversation between two medical professionals and they will be discussing any day-to-day -day, uh, routine uh, conversation that you will be hearing about any medical procedure or anything regarding any patient condition or anything of that sort any workplace extract and they will be give you will be getting one question out of that extract and you have to answer that. Then part C, again, a very tricky one where you will be having a conversation from a researcher or any doctor who will be sharing their experience. And then you have to hear the audio at the same time, you have to mark the answer. So part C is a little technical. I will go through that also in detail. So let's discuss part A first. So here is the listening part, subtest part A. This is the kind of sheet that you will be getting on the exam. So basically, you will be hearing a conversation between the two, uh, between a doctor and a patient, and you will have a few seconds before the audio starts. So when you have your paper in front of you, you just have to skim through the uh, text and you have to notice that what kind of questions are you, can you expect or what kind of answers are you expecting from the patient to answer to you. So for example, if you have a conversation, for example, this is a conversation between a neurologist and a um, patient, or if it's a conversation between an orthopedic surgeon and a patient, and the neuro uh, patient is telling the neurologist that I have a pain in something that is probably related to neurology, and they will, the patient is also telling that the pain is dash in character. So you have to keep something in mind that something related to pain and a characteristic of pain that you are expected to hear. So as soon as you hear something related, the, as soon as you hear the patient telling something about pain, then automatically you need to be attentive that you have to uh, hear the answer would be somewhere here in this part of the conversation. So it, it's fairly easy and requires a little bit of practice and um, just try to... Uh, go through a lot of audios that are available on the internet. They're available on our website, so you can go through them and you can practice them as much as you can. So that will be about your uh, re uh, listening subtest A. So you will have two passages like this. And then you will have listening subtest B. On the listening subtest B, like I told you, it would be about a workplace extract. You will be hearing two colleagues speaking to each other. So you will be hearing a nurse telling about uh, uh, telling a doctor about a patient or maybe a patient telling something to the doctor, some part of a conversation in the hospital. And uh, then you have to hear that conversation and you have to mark the answer. So each conversation will be, uh, uh, you have to answer one question out of each conversation. Then the listening subtest C. Again, very similar, uh, like the reading subtest C was also a little difficult. So the listening subtest C is, I think, the most challenging part that candidates face. Uh, the reason is that uh, you have to hear the audio and answer the question at the same time. And uh, it's and the passages are a little more difficult as compared to your reading or the other parts of the listening subtest because the doctor is usually a researcher who's telling them about their research or is telling you about a new development in medicine or something of that sort. So they will be going on, they will be giving a talk and you have to hear the talk and you have to answer accordingly. The key to that is that all of these questions are in a sequence that are or that is corresponding to the audio. So if this the first passage, the beginning of the conversation will be something related to this passage, to the first question. Then as soon as that is done, then the next question would be something that is uh, that you can anticipate that the next paragraph will have the answer to the second question. And uh, before you begin your um, 
WhatsApp test, see, you will have 90 seconds to go through the questions. So just keep, whenever you're reading the questions before the audio starts, just be very careful that you know what kind of answer are you expecting the speaker to talk about in each question so that when you start listening to the audio, you know exactly that here is the answer. In this conversation, I can anticipate the answer. So you have to be very, very attentive. The key in the listening subtest is that you have to be very, very attentive. If you just kind of daydream for a second, you might miss out on some very, very important information. So the key to it is to be very, very attentive and be focused and do not get distracted by any sounds coming from here and there or if the voice is getting distorted. So please do not get distracted by that. Or if the examiner is saying something, please do not get distracted. I remember the exam, the center where I had my own exam, there was a concert preparation going on somewhere near. So there was a lot of sound at that time. So the, a lot of candidates were getting distracted. So the key to that is that you're not supposed to get distracted, whatever might happen. So listening exercises are a great tool. Um, as much as you can hear, you can hear medical to medical podcast, you can hear to medical news. But the key to that is whenever you're listening, try to uh, understand, try to hear the con the conversations which are lengthier, like medical podcast, so that you have an idea that uh, the conversation, the flow of the conversation is such that you can understand what kind of questions uh, you might get an idea of what kind of questions can you anticipate on the exam. Okay, so medical podcasts are a very good uh, option, a very good tool to, for you to practice your listening subtest. Okay, so this was all about the listening part of the OAT examination. So are there any questions from the listening subtest? Any special trick? The special trick is that uh, the first thing that you can do is use your 90 seconds very wisely. You have your questions in front of you. So whenever when you're reading those questions, just go through the question stem and the, uh, very thoroughly and just have a note in mind that this is what they're asking you in this question. And when you're solving the answers, when you hear the audio, you will have an idea that, okay, this is the question. For example, if the researcher is telling you the difficulty that the particular researcher had while doing a research, okay? So if the, the question is, what did the what is the researcher telling you about the difficulties you face? So you already know that this passage will have something related to the difficulties that he was facing. So you when, when you hear the audio, you will know now that now he started to talk about his difficulties. So now I have to listen carefully because the answer to this question will be in this part of the conversation. So this is how you have to do it. Okay, Dr. Ahmed, get the point? Uh, ma'am, can I ask one question? Sure. Um, yeah, ma'am, you know, the uh, while listening part C, I was, uh, you know, first 90 seconds, I was reading the question and as well as the option. And, you know, uh, the podcast while I'm listening, the same options, you know, the all the three options has the words which we are used by the author or, you know, some someone who is, you know, talking that listening part so i'm confused which option i have to choose because all the three option has the you know whatever the author is saying the option has all those things so i'm a little bit confused which option i have to choose so it depends on the question what are they mentioning particularly in that question for example if they're telling you that um for example the passages what the, what does the author mean by the term burn the bridges okay then you have to answer in context of that question. You have to hear the conversation and then you have to answer. You do not have to mark the literal meaning, okay? You have to answer it in context. You have to read it in between the lines. Do you get the point, Dr. Nofa? Yeah, but you know, uh, I have, uh, sorry to say that, you know, I have given already two attempts of my exam. Both the time, first time and second time, I you know failed in both reading and listening and writing and speaking. I paused, but listening and uh, reading, I was not able to improve uh, improve my things, and I'm not able to find out where I'm doing my mistakes. You know, the first time I got two ninety and three hundred in both listening and reading respectively, and then in my second attempt and three hundred three ten. 
I'm uh, I'm stuck in you no know? I am not able to get where I have to improve my is even though you know uh, following the tricks I was not able to improve my marks in even in you know, the daily giving mock test um okay. so my my condition is so pathetic you know so uh, did, did, when you were practicing what was your mock score what was your practice score when you were solving it on your own all the time i was getting in both reading and listening out of 42 below 25 below 20 not about 25 in any of the mock test or in any of the test i'm doing daily so i was like fed up and gave up you know giving all those test and i was like not not anyway improving anything you know even i'm applying on one strategy one one day i was not able to even i'm listening i was tired and fed up so I was not able to get the point what they are saying, what they trying to convey, what the message they particular given. Already I've got asked you a doubt that doubt, you know, that maybe I'm weak at the vocabulary. I'm not sure what I am weak at in English, and um, you know, my first language is Tamil, and this one I'm very new to the one. and i'm um, the current batch you know 2022 now only i finished my mbbs so i have to i'm literally you know messed up you know what i have to do right now uh, that's the thing okay doctor of i'm sure i'm i know this is very stressful that if you don't clear your exam and you try to give it again so i i know this is a very stressful condition but what you can do is when you're trying to practice try to improve your part a and part b more because that's a little easier as compared to part c so try to improve your part a and part b in such a way that you can score maximum on those two parts and then you will have a little bit of leverage on your part c you will have a bit of margin where you can uh, you know try to improve that as well but on part c you will have a little bit of margin of mistake or of error but uh, what you can do is um i after your after the fix is over then you can coordinate with our uh, coordinators and i think they'll they help you out with the detailed practice sessions they'll help you with those okay dr nof yeah thank you you're welcome okay so the key to the exam is that since this is not a memorization exam this is not something that you can anticipate beforehand that what kind of a passage will you get so you it, You, it might be easy it might be difficult or it might be very difficult and nowadays they've made the exam a little more difficult as compared to the can exam takers in the past so now it's a little difficult and i would always advise my uh, students to prepare very very well before attempting the exam or even before booking the exam initially earlier people used to book the exam a week or two before um After they used to start the preparation after booking the exam, but now since the exam is a little more difficult, so I will always advise you to take to start preparing before booking your date, and then uh, even after you book your date, at least keep a margin of at least one month before your booking date to your exam date, so you have time so that you can improve your scores if in case you're not you're finding something very difficult. Okay. now we come on to the writing sub test this is something the candidates find very very stressful because this is something where you have to show your excellence in trying to expand those notes and trying to write it down in a very time limited time and you have to include all of the relevant information you do not have to include anything extra at the same time you have to keep your language very professional you do not have to make any grammatical mistakes so this is something which requires a lot of practice so so basically whenever you write a letter you will have two examiners who will be checking your um, oat writing which will be checked on the basis of a very standard criteria and you will be given a set of notes and you have to write it down so you will have 5 minutes to read those notes and then you will have 40 minutes to write it down so whenever you're writing the key to writing is that first you have to make note of what is the actual important information that you need to expand especially when you're writing past history and medical history for example if they're giving you a candidate a patient who has a history of gout and they are give, telling you that the mother was asthmatic so that's that is not relevant to that but if they're telling you that the father was a patient of chronic kidney disease that is relevant information so always try to skim down the information you have to make notes of what is the important information that you need to write it down and what is the information that you can 
skip out. So that is where you, a lot of candidates make the mistake. They either miss out on info, important information or what they do is they write too much of information and they, that exceeds the total word count and that also goes negatively against you. And uh, one more thing is when you're practicing for your writing, always write it in a time manner. A lot of candidates are used to writing very good letters, but they are used to writing it in 60 minutes or one and a half hour or how much time they need. What happens on the real exam is that already you are in a stressful situation. And then after your uh, brainstorming session, when you start to write it down, you do not have enough time to write it down fairly. They give you a separate sheet where you can just scribble down your rough notes and then you will be writing it down fairly on the clean sheet that they have given it to you. So a lot of candidates, what they do is they take a lot of time in trying to scribble all of the information and they do not have enough time to uh, write it down fairly and they miss out the end of the passage or they do, or they end the end their handwriting is not legible so please make sure that whenever you're practicing always try to practice it in a manner that is very similar to the exam one thing it should be timed and second thing it should be done exactly in the manner where you will be what you are expected to do on the exam so the type of writing that they, you can get on the exam includes the star letter, the one that is most usually given on the exam. You will be given a passage where you have to write a referral letter, which is a discharge letter. So you are either a GP and you have to write a letter to a specialist or you are a specialist who is treating a patient and you are referring the patient back to the GP, something of that sort. Then one is the emergency referral letter where you have to write a letter where you have to uh, refer the patient to uh, the emergency department. There you have to make sure that you have, you have to write the current situation first, and then you will have to write the past history and the personal histories later on. So these are small things that you need to be very careful about. Uh, when you're writing a passage, the sequence of the passage is very important and that differs from letter to letter. And the second thing that is very important is that a lot of candidates do not proofread their letters when they give it in for submission. So there are a lot of minor grammatical mistakes, like they forget to put in articles like A, and and the is missing, or where they have to use a capital letter and where they have to use a small letter. So these are the small mistakes that candidates do, and that really affects your mark, marks negatively. So you might be scoring a 370 or a 360, and just because of your very minor mistakes, you might score a 340 or a 335, and then you might have to give the exam all over again. So these are small things that you need to practice beforehand. Okay. Okay. Then the last subtest, and again, a very, very important subtest is the speaking subtest. So in the speaking subtest, you are expected to perform your role of a doctor, and you will be doing two role play cards, and you might be having a the examiner will be either the patient or the caretaker of that patient. So you have to demonstrate your ability to communicate with the patient. And uh, you have to do that in a very professional environment. So you will have two role play cards and you will be given three minutes to read that role play card. And then you will have five minutes to speak about each role play card. So you'll have a three minute session to read it. Then you have to speak for five minutes and then immediately you will have another three minutes to read the second role play card and then you have to speak for five minutes. So this is the entire speaking subtest. The speaking subtest will uh, check your range of language. What kind of language are you using? The terminologies that you mentioned. Your tone is very important. Neither it should be arrogant nor it should be too persuading. It should be firm, professional. Then the second thing is that the use of empathetic sentences, if the patient is telling you that I am feeling pain or I'm feeling distressed. So you have to use terminologies like I'm sorry to hear that you have to be empathetic, but not too sweet. So it should not look like flattering or buttering, but it should look very professional, yet empathetic and sincere. And a lot of candidates have a, um, an, a problem or if, since we're used to using those slang terminologies, so they tend to use that in that speaking conversation as well. So the use of yeah instead of yes, or the use of honestly, I got it. Things like that are not allowed. So you have to use very professional sentences, very professional um, terms, and uh, you have to remain professional. Do not the person when even when you are using empathetic sentences, the patient, the person speaking uh, who is speaking to you is your patient. They're not your friend. 
so people tend to use terms like darling or honey or sweetheart things like that are not allowed even if you're being sympathetic or empathetic okay so you have to be professional yet you have to be soft and you have to convince the patient for treatment or whatever um, management you're planning to do or you will be referring to the patient to any specialist or whatever the conversation or role play is expected you to do so um, this is all about speaking so the correct way to speak is first you can practice with people either native english speakers or you can practice with other people who are your colleagues and who are working in the medical field or you can take help professional help that is you can take our help on a med exam expert we have mentors who can do one on one speaking sessions with you and who will help you to improve your speaking grade as well so that is all about the four sub tests on the oat exam if you have any questions i'll uh, answer those just a second there are a lot of questions just let me go through them um could you tell us how to improve listening okay and should you write on rough paper yeah, yes you have to write it you will be getting a rough paper and you can write it down do not need, you do not need to write the entire passage but just the important point which you uh, want to finalize on to your main paper so for that okay dr yogini okay should we use yes definitely you have to use yes exactly i understand your concerns sentences and phrases like this okay reading and listening part b and part c sir can we erase the answer in listening part a yes you can erase your answers but you will not have um a lot of time to erase your answers you will at the end of the session you will only have 15 seconds to give in your paper so you will not have a lot of time to erase and write your answers again and again okay any podcast you can um, hear podcasts on google you can hear podcasts on youtube um things like that no specific uh, podcast as such okay now reading and listening again uh, there were a lot of uh, concerns about reading and listening i'll just go through those again just a second i'll just go through the reading part again and then i'll just give you a quick review of how you can solve those questions okay 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 now the reading part a basically the reading part a wants you to know that this particular part of the con so it's about it's a passage about a particular illness or a particular injury it's basically an information brochure so it has information about some things and you have four different passages and each passage has information about a particular aspect of that disease for example in this passage for example the one that's um, visible on your screen so the, basically the first passage is telling you about fractures dislocations sprains they have all the definitions then the second one is passage is telling you about the management okay then the third passage is telling you about painkillers like it's telling you about the morphine it's telling you its dose its strength it's all of these things and the fourth passage is telling you about the technique for plasters so you have four passages very distinct information right and then after that they are asking you questions about those particular aspects of the information that you've just gone through so they they are asking you procedures for delivering pain relief so you must be knowing that what are the procedures of delivering pain relief so you have for example in passage c they've already mentioned that it can be given iv or subcutaneous or things like that so it's basically simple information that you can just get in a one glance of uh, skimming through the passage okay or what is the procedure to follow when splinting a fractured limb so like i told you it's passage d which has information about splinting a fractured limb and what to record when assessing a patient so in passage b was mentioned everything about the management so even if you just go through it once you will be able to answer all of these passages easily 
can we circle yes you can circle uh, important things or, or with pencil regarding reading and listening yes you can do that so that will really help you when you're hearing the audio you know exactly what you want to hear okay okay so this was about part a of the um, reading and here you have to in the next seven questions you just have to give one or few uh, line few word answers so here also you if you're going through the passage even in one glance you will be able to find out the answer and you have to just mention uh, it in a few words or if it's a single word answer you can just use a single word here in part b also you just have to go through the passage and you know should know the gist of that passage what is the passage trying to tell you you do not have to go into the literal meanings of those questions but just the gist of the passage what is the passage exactly telling you about and then you have the question to that passage that for example this is a manual about a, a blood pressure monitor and you have questions that it, which is telling you something about that blood pressure monitor so when you go through the passage that is telling you what any particular information about those monitors you just have to click that should we erase what we have circled yes you should erase what you've circled yes you should always circle it with a very very light pencil so that you can easily erase it okay because you have to mark your answers in this circle in a b and c the one that you see for example so here you or on your paper you have to mark it here like this okay so anything that you mark on the question should be raised then part subtest part c that i told you again uh, when you're reading a passage, just try, try to mark down all of the important information that you just come across. And then when you are solving those questions, so you can go back and see what the passage is talking about. For example, they tell you what is the first paragraph telling you about. So then you can go back and just skim through the first passage again, and then you can answer the question accordingly. Okay. For listening subtest A, a lot of candidates find it find reading more, listening more difficult as compared to reading. And in listening, what you have to do is you have to practice it. Uh, that's the key. And when you have a few seconds before your audio starts, use those very well. Like I told you that, for example, this is a conversation between a physiotherapist and a patient. And a the patient is telling the physiotherapist about a pain a certain injury or pain that he's experiencing so you know that this patient is telling about a back injury which is associated uh, which is uh, sustained after so the patient will be telling the physiotherapist something that he was doing and that led to an injury or for example the pain is located in so the patient will be telling something about a location of that pain so when you're hearing the audio you can anticipate that now the patient will be saying something regarding the uh, location of that pain or something or regarding the characteristic nature of that pain like the pain is described as so that you will be the patient will be mentioning something about a characteristic feature of pain that it's either aching or stabbing or something of that sort the text the audio is not very fast okay so it's something and there will be some uh, a few sentences which will not have any corresponding questions like for example there will be some part of the conversation which will not have any questions so you will have a little bit of time to compose yourself but still you have to be very very attentive okay then in listening subtest b the key is again the same that when you get a question when you have time before the audio starts read your question thoroughly and you should have an idea what kind, what is the, uh, you should read your options also thoroughly so that you know that when you hear the audio, which is the exact um, um, option that is corresponding to the uh, tech, uh, to the audio that you're hearing. Okay. Okay. Then listening subtest C, like I told you, the, these 90 seconds which you have before your audio starts are very very significant you should have an idea of what each question is talking about and the basic idea that what is the each option about like for example if Anna says that her main focus of work as an occupational therapist is she's designing something she is supporting or she is flexible 
something like that. So here, when you hear the audio and she's telling you something about her role as an occupational therapist, you will be hearing something that she will be specifically emphasizing upon as her role as, a, as an occupational therapist and that is the option you have to mark. Okay? Is the idea of how to solve reading and listening clear to everybody or you need, um, I, if you want, I can repeat it again. Okay, so Dr. Yogini, you asked about how would, should you uh, practice if you have 15 days to prepare. So if you have 15 days, then I would recommend that do all of those systems, at least all of the subtest at least once daily. So try to practice it. Um, so when, if you have more than a month to prepare, then you can do one thing is that you should practice writing daily uh, and speaking daily. And along with that, one day you can practice reading and one day you can practice listening. Okay, you can do two different tests that are available. Either you can use our website resources or you can use any resources that are available on the internet. And uh, or, or these resources that I've mentioned in my uh, presentation, and we're very thankful to the OET test prep because they've allowed us to use their uh, content for educational purposes. So you can use these as well. These are the OET sample tests that are available on the website. So you can use those and then if you have less than uh, a month to prepare, then I would recommend that at least solve one subtest every day. At least solve um, one set of all the subtests every day. Like do one test, a test of reading, one listening, one speaking and one writing every day. Okay. Um, do we have to return the writing? case notes in three minutes or oh, no you'll have your case notes with you throughout the uh, entire 45 minute period you do not have to return your notes no no not at all okay okay now that was about the preparation of OAT. Now, how can we help you to improve your OAT scores? Apart from our usual full courses that uh, some of you might have taken before as well. So we offer full courses which help you to prepare your for your OAT exam starting from your booking of the exam up till the day of your exam. We guide you at a daily basis. So we do one-on-one -on -one classes, we do one-on-one -on -one speaking sessions, we do detailed um, uh, discussion on your each aspect of the uh, subtest. Then we uh, check your letters that you sent us to uh, sent it to us. We guide you regarding that. And apart from that, uh, you can also book our mock test. But now what I wanted to tell you people about uh, is the new uh, idea that Medexam Expert is launching. And that is the OET mock camp. It's a first of its kind mock camp that we are organizing for all of you. So it will be a three day mock camp and which will be on the 6th, 7th and 8th of April. And it will be ideal for candidates who are applying for their April exams. So people who are preparing for exams in April, it's ideal for them because we will be doing a complete mock camp and it will be exactly in the same fashion as the main exam. So it will be a timed exam having all the subtests in one go and uh, you will be uh, getting fee detailed feedback on your performance. A little bit about the details of the mock camp, I will just let you know. So it will be a three day mock camp and we will be having an online camp and we will be getting detailed comprehensive evaluation and assessment on that mock camp. So basically what we will do on the first day, we will have a listening, reading and writing task exactly in the same fashion as the exam. And uh, all of the candidates will be uh, online at the same time and they will be performing the same task on, in a timed fashion, just exactly very, very similar to the exam. So that when you go into your examination hall, that is not something that you have not seen before, not, not something that you've not experienced before. So you will feel very, very confident and very um, relaxed when you go into your examination hall. Then what we will do on the second day is we will be allotting uh, speaking time with the mentors and each of you will be assigned and you will be allotted a slot where you will have your two role play cards exactly in the same fashion as the main exam. 
and then on the third day we will be doing a detailed um, analysis of your performances so you will be announcing the results and then we will be giving you feed personalized feedback regarding each uh, subtest or and your performance on each subtest we will be discussing the answer keys and we i will uh, also be giving you tips and guidelines on how you can improve your grades individually so that will be about your oat mock camp so a little bit how that uh, mock camp will function so this is our website this and you will be assigned an id and a password uh, and then you will log into your OAT website or the OAT MedExam Med Expert website. And when you will log in, this will be something, this will be your dashboard and you will be assigned a task. This is your assigned task. So this will be your assigned task. And when you log in, you will be shown your listening, reading and writing subtest like this in this fashion. And then on the prompt, you will be starting your test and on the we will be timing your exam. And then as soon as you will complete that test, then you will be submitting. You will have the, the format of it will be exactly very, very similar to the main exam. So for example, this is the reading subtest A. So it will have A, B, and C and D, very, very similar to the main exam. You will be answering the questions like this. And then once you've completed all of your answers, then you will be submitting it. So this is your submit option. So you will be submitting it and it will prompt you that if you want to submit it. So after your submission, you will come back to the main dashboard and then you will be going on to your next subtest. So this is how we will be doing the complete subtest and how it will help you. Uh, so you will be familiarizing yourself with the main exam text format and structure. So that will not be something that will surprise you on the main day and you will not be feeling overwhelmed. You will be very relaxed on the day of the exam and you will exactly know where you're standing a few days before your exam. You'll know what shortcomings and how you can improve your shortcomings. So this is what we've introduced now and we would be happy to take your feedback. I can take your questions again. Ma'am missing one reading, listening, writing subtest. The mock is whole day. No, it's not the whole day. It's uh, it will be exactly like forty five minutes for uh, listening, uh, for re uh, reading, forty for listening, and then forty five minutes for writing. It will be exactly in the same fashion as the main exam. Okay. So, are there any other questions uh, regarding the mock camp? Any that you did not understand or anything regarding the examination preparation that you did not understand and would like me to uh, the charges for mock uh, all of the details uh, that you need for your mock exam i'll just share the uh, poster with you just a second All of the details uh, for contact are given on our website as well as our social media handles. Um, you can contact us on these WhatsApp numbers and our course coordinators will be very help happy to help you out and they will give you all the details that you need. So this is the WhatsApp number that is mentioned here. So you can contact us on this WhatsApp number and through any of our social media handles as well how to schedule our daily practice please guide now i uh, see your daily practice will depend on how your personal sh schedule is for somebody who is um, working full-time or is a full-time student they might not have enough time to prepare all the subtests in one go but those who have uh, time on their hands or who have their exam very near to the exam who are very near to the exam date they should ideally do at least one complete set of all the subtests for each day at least and then you can improve as much as you can. And whenever you practicing, practice it exactly in the same fashion as the main exam. Time it exactly like the exam. And uh, even when you're writing, try to practice it exactly like you would do it in the main exam. Okay. So are there any other questions? Any books that are recommended for reading? Uh, there are no, actually, there are no books that are recommended, but you can use any of the authentic sources. So all the candidates who are uh, registering with our uh, course, with our OAT course, will be getting access to all of the reading uh, 
tools and uh, you can also use any of the tools that are available on the internet. How much time should one give to daily practice? Now, Dr. Mona, that depends on your in that depends on your individual uh, speaking, on your individual English language skills, as well as your time. How much time can you give? At least two to three hours each day. I would recommend at least two hours. Two to three hours. OAT past papers test available on YouTube. Are they authentic? Um, the, the OAT never shares its exams. The OAT never shares the question papers. So anything that you see on the internet are recalls that any candidate who just came out of the examination hall and they try to, um, they whatever they remember, they just uh, wrote it down. So they are not authentic. So they are, you can use them as learning tools, but they're not authentic past papers. Okay. So are there any other questions? So for any information regarding the fee structure, the timings of the mock camp or the details of the mock camp, if you did not understand anything, you can always contact us on the web, uh, on our social media or on our WhatsApp numbers and we will be happy to give you detailed guidance regarding your preparation and um, it's an easy exam. It's a doable exam, not a very easy exam, but a very doable exam. And if you just uh, learn the technique of the exam, it's a technical exam that requires you a certain set of techniques that you need for to clear the exam. So it's always ideal to take a professional help so that it, you are very confident about your preparation and uh, it will really help you in clearing your exams in the first attempt. What is the ideal idea if you uh, give to the patient who uh, give to the student who feels stuck like this, you know, uh, like myself, who, you know, struggling to pass or clear the OET, both listening and reading of daily doing the same stuff. Instead, what we can do, you know, a different thing that can, you know, boost up our mind to do a lot of exam uh, for the mock test. So, Dr. Nofa, what you can do is you should practice as much as you can instead of doing the same questions over and over again there are a lot of resources that are available not just the um, on the oat website but also on the other there are a lot of other question banks available as well so you can use the other question bank you can use newer resources every day new resources are being added to the pools so you can try newer resources rather than trying to solve the same questions over and over again and in the background, what you can do in order to improve your listening, you can start listening to blogs and podcasts. And if, uh, in terms of reading, you can start reading uh, more passages, more uh, literature regarding medicine. Yeah, I tried many, um, you know, I tried many of the different, different resources, you know, different, different material, not a repeated one. And even that in that I'm getting very low marks. So, you know, it just give me a low hope that why, you know, even getting the same mark, doing the same stuff repeatedly and that way. That's why I asked. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. So, Nofa, you can coordinate with one of our course coordinators and they can help you with the detailed preparation. Okay. So they can help you a little bit more about our other subtest preparations as well. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So any other question? Are there any other questions regarding any aspect of the um, preparation or regarding the OAT mock camp that uh, anybody needs any further explanation? So we can do that now. Okay, so if there are no questions or no queries, then we can end the webinar for today. So my idea, my tip to all of you would be to, if you are planning to give your OAT exam in any further future date, so you can start prepare, preparing for your exam now, it's never too late to begin and it's all never too early to begin either. So you can just start preparing from today, do as little as you can, but start improving your vocabulary, your pronunciation and your reading and listening skills from today. So start going through literature, start going through materials so that you can start preparing for your exam and try to uh, 
avail all of the resources that are available. You can use our full course, our regular courses that we are offering for OET candidates, and you can also use our mock camp and our mock exam that we offer. So uh, all the very best for your OET preparation and see you on the mock camp day. Thank you. Bye-bye.